Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, we're going to talk about keeping the weight off with intermittent fasting. Now, once you've found the intermittent fasting plan that will help you get the weight off, as long as you continue to work that plan and and you stay consistent with it, you will eventually get down to the weight that you want to maintain at. And that's really the whole key to this is once you get down to your goal weight, how do you keep it off, right? And A lot of people wonder, well, do I have to keep doing intermittent fasting for the rest of my life? Or, you know, once I get down to my goal weight, can I just go back uh, to eating normally? And I would say that depends. The first thing to remember is that whatever got you to your goal weight will keep you there, right? So if, you know, an 18-6 practice consistently got you down to your goal weight, that's all you have to keep doing. Just continue to practice that and that will keep you right where you want to be. But you may kind of start to get nervous and you may think, well, what if I don't like doing it for that long? What if I get to my goal weight and I just want to go back to eating, you know, three times a day or whatever? And the thing that I want to remind you is, you know, plenty of people lose weight in totally different ways, right? So, you know, some people, they eat six to eight small meals a day and they get down to their goal weight. And so just just the idea that, you know, you must do intermittent fasting for forever uh, in order to keep the weight off. I don't think that that's true. However. The thing is, some of us, and I include myself in this, uh, we just prefer bigger portion sizes. And a lot of us kind of struggle with stress eating, emotional eating. And because of that, intermittent fasting works really well because it kind of limits the amount of time you might be tempted to stress eat. And it also allows for bigger portions because you're eating less often. You know, back in 2017, 2018, yeah, I was doing OMAD one meal a day. I was walking six miles every day and I was able to get down to like 142. And I thought, you know, I don't know. As I was going along, I wasn't really sure. People were asking me like, well, does that mean you have to do OMAD for the rest of your life in order to maintain that loss? Or, you know, what, what is that going to look like? And I, I kind of started to panic a little bit. I thought, I don't really know. Does that mean I will have to do OMAD every day for the rest of my life if I want to maintain there? And once I got down to my goal weight, I thought, okay, well, I know what will keep me there. And and that is an important thing to remember. You always know what can keep you there. Like if you need to, this is the way to do it. But you can also experiment. I love experimenting. And I want to encourage you that you always have that option to experiment. And this is something that has been kind of actually difficult for me uh, to continue to do. It's something that I loved when I was uh, first losing weight back in like 2015, 2016. I love to experiment and there's a lot of freedom. Uh, But then in 2017, when I started my YouTube channel, I started to feel like I had less freedom, but that wasn't really true. I just, that was my own perception that, you know, people now expected me to just always do intermittent fasting and they always expected me to be on OMAD once I started doing OMAD. So with that in mind, I I told myself, you know, I have got to continue to act as though I don't have a YouTube channel, like I don't have a podcast and like I don't have a couple of books I've written about all this stuff because the point of this whole thing that I do here is I want to be authentic. I want to experiment and I want to pretend like I don't have all those things because I feel like if I become that type of person who just gets married to the idea of I must do OMAD, then that's not very helpful. That's not very realistic. That's like not living in the real world. The In, or in the real world, most people don't have these external things that kind of keep them on plan. So I try to, to the best of my ability, pretend like I don't have those things so that I act more naturally. And so I have been experimenting uh, this whole time, really, uh, with various eating plans. You know, sometimes it didn't go too well. Uh, I I did try a couple of uh, weeks, you know, trying to do like three meals a day. That did not work for me. (laughs) Like my weight did start to track back up. Um, What I have found, though, is with, you know, if I'm not doing OMAD, I do need to be more careful about portion sizes. Uh, Because again, you know, I like bigger portions. And what I've seen is uh, that with two meals a day, it's easier for me to start to trend up than uh, when I would would just eat one meal a day. And also, I've found that it's really important for me to eat 
more slowly uh, during my meals because again, you know, I tend to be a fast eater. And, uh, and so when I sit down to my meals, because I'm eating twice, that's like two opportunities to eat too fast and eat too much. So I just have to slow it down a bit more. But I continue to eat whatever I want. That is something that I always have kept to is that I don't want to limit the types of foods that I'm eating. I don't want to go low carb. I don't want to do anything like that. I just want to continue to eat all the foods. So as you're working down towards your goal weight, or if right now you're at your goal weight, um, here's what I would suggest for you. There's three steps that you should just take yourself through as you're in maintenance. The first one is to have a plan. Have your plan, write it down, write down the rules for yourself as far as, you know, are you going to do intermittent fasting? If so, what kind of window are you going to have? Uh, are you going to have days off? If so, write those down. Write down the exercise that you're committed to doing and write down what kind of weight range you want to maintain in. Now, remember, it's just like when you're making a plan for weight loss. You may find like the first plan you write down is not a good plan. Like maybe your plan is going to be way too strict and you're going to feel like this doesn't give me enough freedom. Okay, well then sit back down and write a new plan. Or you may find like, oh, this was a little too loosey-goosey and I started gaining weight. So I need to change my plan a bit. But the main thing is to have a plan, a written plan, so that you know what you are telling yourself it's okay to do and what's not okay to do. Step two is just to implement your plan and iterate as necessary. So again, you know, you may find that as you're going along, implementation's going really well, like you're able to stick to all the rules, but then suddenly your weight's trending up. Okay, so you got to stop and then go back, make a small change and continue to get it. Eventually you will get the plan that's working for you, the thing that you really like to do and that's giving you the uh, weight results that you want. And step three is to track forever. So, you know, just because you get down to your goal weight, like, the, like this was my thing. Uh, the mistake I always made was I would get down to my goal weight and then I'd stop weighing and I would go back to eating the way I used to eat. And then eventually I would go back to weighing what I used to weigh plus some pounds. So instead, once you get down to your goal weight, the thing that will keep you there, the thing that will prevent that horrible day from coming when you turn around and say, oh my gosh, what has happened? Who's that person in the mirror? What will prevent that is if you continue to track and you continue to hold yourself accountable. And that can really give you a lot of freedom because you can realize always, you know exactly where you are with your weight. You never have to fear that one day you're going to wake up and realize like, oh no, I've gotten overweight again. If you continue to track, you simply just don't have that worry. So at the end of the day, maintenance is not magic. It's not luck. It's all about continuing to take action, to have a plan and to implement that plan and make changes as you need to. And then just continue to track your progress so that you stay where you want to be. So thank you for joining me in this episode and I'll see you in the next one. You're sick and tired of being overweight. You're working hard to lose and the scale refuses to budge. You're done with dieting. You just want to eat like everybody else. When you hire me as your intermittent fasting coach, we'll tackle the issues that are standing between you and the life you want. If you're unsure about whether one-on-one -on -one coaching is right for you, click on the link in the show notes and schedule your free 30-minute consultation. I look forward to working with you.